The first item of business is general questions, and at question number one, I call Christine Graham. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions it has had with NHS Borders and NHS Lothian. Cabinet Secretary uh, Hamza Yusuf. Can I say both ministers, of course, and government officials meet regularly uh, with the leadership of all NHS boards, including NHS uh, Lothian and NHS uh, Borders, to discuss a, a range of matters. But it won't be of any surprise at all to Christine Graham and other members that the uh, most recent discussions have focused on the uh, extreme winter pressures that both boards have been facing. Christine Graham. Uh, thank you very much, thank the Cabinet Secretary for his answer. With reference to the extreme winter pressures, I of course welcome the announcement of £8 million for interim uh, social care beds to ease pressure on our hospitals. Um, and I note it's been shared between health and social care partnerships. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary when we will hear progress uh, about the division of this money between the partnerships, particularly those serving the Rhodes, South Tweedale and Alderdale, which is my constituency, which of course includes both NHS Lothian and NHS Borders. Uh, can I say that currently there is good work being done by both NHS Lothian and NHS Borders on the issue of delayed discharge? Uh, to answer her question directly, uh, as the First Minister said earlier this week, we will get a further update at SCORE, which she will be chairing uh, tomorrow. And of course, I will find an appropriate way uh, to update the member uh, in that respect. But it is fair to say that the additional 300 beds, uh, interim care beds that uh, I announced last week, uh, that is on top of the 600 interim care beds that are already being used, and, and many of those will be in Lothian uh, and in Borders. But uh, it's so, so important uh, that we do everything we possibly can and facilitate and help our local partners to do everything they can to get those who are in hospital, who are clinically safe to be discharged, back home, because, of course, ultimately, it is better for the individual too. So we will get an update uh, tomorrow at SCORE. Craig Hoy. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I was recently contacted by a constituent whose 92-year-old uh, mother, who lives with an NHS Lothian, suffered a bad fall in her, her own home. She lay on a hard wooden floor in a lot of pain for five hours for an ambulance to arrive. Her daughter repeatedly called for an update and was told not to move her mother, who was crying in pain, nor give her anything to drink. When the paramedics finally arrived, she was transferred to Edinburgh Royal Infirmary for an operation for two severe breaks. Minister, these ambulance and subsequent treatment waits are inhumane. So will the SNP government back our plan and introduce new crisis maximum waiting times and finally get a grip on the horrific waiting times across our NHS? Yeah. Cabinet Secretary. Well, what I would say, of course, any uh, situation, as Craig Coy has described, where uh, anybody uh, gets a substandard uh, level of service that we would expect collectively across this chamber, then I apologise uh, for that and, and deeply regretful. And, uh, of course, uh, if Craig Hoy wishes to follow up with me, uh, I'll ensure that uh, the Scottish Ambulance Service appropriately investigate. I, I'm sure he understands, I know he does, uh, that uh, particularly the, the few weeks during the festive period in the first week of January uh, were incredibly difficult, probably the most difficult the Ambulance Service uh, has provided. I have looked at the plans that the Conservatives uh, have brought forward. I don't see any detail. I don't see how just simply saying that there must be uh, a 15-minute uh, turnaround time uh, in place actually means that that is the case. In fact, they have uh, many similar schemes uh, in England, uh, but actually you'll see that ambulances, unfortunately, are queued up outside NHS trusts uh, in England too. So we're doing a range, we're taking a range of measures to try to improve the turnaround time for ambulances so they're not stacked outside of hospitals and that they get back out on the road and respond as quickly as possible. And I have to say, seeing the most recent data from the Scottish Ambulance Service, there certainly has been an improvement, particularly in amongst those most urgent uh, life, uh, immediate life-threatening calls, but I'm happy to keep the member uh, updated in that respect. Question number two, Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what assessment that has made of the role of local government services in improving public health and wellbeing. Minister Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, we recognise the important role of local government services in improving public health and wellbeing in order to ensure people in Scotland live more years in good health. We know that prevention is key and the building blocks of good health and wellbeing include good education, jobs, housing and communities, all of which local government services contribute to. In recognition of this, Public Health Scotland is jointly sponsored by COSLA and the Scottish Government with the aim of improving population health and combating health inequalities and their wider causes. Brian Whittle. Can I thank the Minister uh, for that answer? I know he recognises that many of the solutions to Scotland's poor health record sit outside of the NHS 
predominantly in council-funded community activities. So I wonder if the, the Minister recognises that the, the, the council financial settlement that the government have given them is requiring councils to slash the very services that he, he, he advocates, and this will appear in the NHS uh, uh, poor health ledger, increasing the pressure on the NHS. Minister. Uh, officer, uh, we have listened to councils and are increasing the resources available to local government uh, by over £578 million uh, in the next financial year. Uh, local authorities also have a range of revenue raising powers uh, that are not available to other public services, including newly devolved powers over empty property relate rates relief. I agree uh, with Mr Whittle that it would be uh, great if there was more money available for all of our public services. Uh, and I would ask him uh, to do what the Scottish Government has done and appeal to the Treasury to loosen the purse strings, to stop austerity and to invest in our public services. Carol Mockin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, Across the country, including SNP-run councils, they are at breaking point due to the very cuts that have just been discussed made year on year on local government budgets. The Minister cannot seriously expect councils to continue playing their pivotal role in improving public health and wellbeing through the provision of services such as green space, sports facilities and wider support initiatives if they continue to lose money. Will the Minister, therefore, Commit to me today to speak out to the First Minister and, and Finance Secretary and ask them to listen to local government leaders, including SNP leaders, who are clearly saying, without support from the Scottish Government, that these services, essential services, Briefly, cannot please. be delivered. Minister. Um, thank you, President Officer. And as I said in my answer to Mr Whittle, the government has listened to local authorities, uh, to local government, uh, and that is why uh, the resources available uh, will increase by over £578 million uh, in the next financial year. Uh, I would like that to be more, as would the First Minister, uh, as would uh, the Finance Secretary. Uh, but we work within a fixed bu uh, budget. Uh, we have no borrowing powers, as Ms Mochan is well aware. Uh, and it would be far better uh, if austerity were to go and HM Treasury uh, were actually to provide uh, and resource public services in Scotland and right across these islands. Uh, that would be better for all. It would be lead to better outcomes for all. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, what we have Briefly, is please, a Minister. Tory government uh, that seems unwilling to invest in our public services. Question number three, Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the progress of the Bairns Hoos for young people within the justice system. Minister Eleanor Whittam. A national Bairns Hoos governance group has been established and extensive engagement with key partners carried out. The first national standards for Bairns Hoos will be published this spring. We are developing a phrased approach to implementation and will further <laughs> publish information in the coming months, along with a progress report on our Bairns Hoos project plan. We are also progressing the rollout of the Scottish Child Interview Model for joint investigative interviews, which will be a cornerstone of the Bairns Hoos approach to justice in Scotland. Rona Mackay. I thank the Minister for that answer. Um, can the Minister describe the, the benefits of the Bairns Hoos system in detail? Which emerging practice developments in line with other European models will be used when creating this system, as well as its collaborative approach in justice, health and children's services? Minister. Like myself, I know Rona Mackay has a keen awareness of adverse childhood experiences. The Bairns Hoos represents a child-centred approach to delivering justice, care and recovery for children who have experienced trauma. Services will be co-located, reducing the need for multiple interviews by different agencies in different locations, which we know can be re-traumatising. The national standards are based on the European Promise Quality Standards and as recent associate members of their Barna House network, we now have access to learning from existing best practice across member countries. Alongside partners, we will continue to draw on relevant best practice emerging in Scotland, including the Scottish Child Interview Model, which continues to roll out at pace. Question number four, Gillian Martin. 
Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what it is doing to help recovery from adverse childhood experiences. Minister Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. We are taking a wide range of actions to prevent and mitigate the negative impact of ACEs and trauma and support the health, well-being and resilience of all of those affected. This includes work to tackle harmful drug and alcohol use, address poverty, support mental health and reduce inequalities. The Scottish Government and COSLA have a joint ambition uh, to develop trauma-informed and trauma-responsive workforces and services across Scotland. Uh, and since 2018, we have invested over £6 million in a national trauma training programme. Current work is underway to support the development of trauma-informed approaches and services and settings, including, including in education, maternity and social work, and to support care-experienced children and young people. Julian Martin. I thank the Minister for that very comprehensive answer. I would like to ask um, a further question. Many care experienced children going into adulthood will have other ad adverse childhood experiences and will still need support. Can the Minister outline how it is delivering on the promise and specifically how support into early adulthood is being developed? Um, Minister. Thank you, uh, President Officer, and I, I welcome that question from Ms Martin. The Scottish Government is committed to addressing the intergenerational impact of adverse childhood experiences and trauma, uh, and we're providing a, a range of support to parents, carers, children and families to help prevent, better prevent ACEs from happening, and there are a wide range of work, uh, there's a wide range of work going on. The Government is committed to delivering the pro promise uh, and to ensure uh, that we do, do better for care experienced young people. And we have to recognise uh, that they, that may involve help throughout their lives. Uh, and to show how important the government uh, sees the trauma informed Briefly, approach, Minister. Uh, in November, the Deputy First Minister led a valuable session with ministers on trauma awareness and how best to support those affected. Question number five, Fulton McGregor. Hey, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions it has had with North Lancashire Council regarding a new build, Gartcosh Primary. Cabinet Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville. We have been in regular contact with North Lancashire Council regarding a replacement for Gartcosh Primary School. Fulton McGregor. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. I was delighted to hear the news last week, indeed, just a day or so after I lodged this question, that NLC have now identified landing Gartcosh on which to build the school. I fully welcome this statement from the Council and I agree with them that it is a major step forward. The question of a new school has been around for some time and it really needs to happen at the earliest opportunity. The current Gartcosh Primary is 110 years old this year and is not fit for modern teaching. In addition, following massive growth in the population in the question, local area, please. it is very much not able to deal with the current or future capacity. Sorry, President Officer. That said, teachers, pupils and the Parent Council are doing excellent work at the school and against these challenging circumstances. Mr McGregor, can I have a question, please? Yes. Would the Cabinet Secretary join me in praising the work of the school community and will she commit to working with me and North Lanarkshire Council to ensure that the new build that this community so richly deserves Thank you, Mr McGregor. Is delivered Cabinet Secretary. As possible? Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, uh, and I assure we uh, all appreciate Fulton McGregor's enthusiasm and passion for uh, an issue which he has been working on for some time. And I would very much like to take this opportunity to praise the continued worth, uh, work of uh, Mr McGregor and also the continued work of Gartcrush School Community. My officials will absolutely uh, keep in close contact with the Council to ensure that a new build at Gartcrush Primary is delivered as soon as possible. Question number six, Ariane Burgess. To ask the Scottish Government what recent engagement it has had with community housing enablers such as the Communities Housing Trust in the Highlands and Islands region to support the delivery of its commitments regarding rural homes. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robison. The Scottish Government regularly meets with community housing enablers. In September, I met with the Community Housing Trust and South of Scotland Community Housing and recognised the vital work carried out by these organisations in supporting communities to deliver more affordable homes in rural and island communities, and I'm keen for that to continue. We've also been giving consideration to the funding arrangements of Community Housing Trust to ensure they can continue to support the delivery of rural homes as part of our work to develop a remote rural and and Island Housing Action Plan. Ariane Burgess. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. The Butte House Agreement commits the Scottish Government to ensuring community housing trusts are adequately funded so that they can support the delivery of our enhanced rural home building plans. The Communities Housing Trust currently has a pipeline of 600 projects 
150 of which are at risk due to the lack of capacity. What more can the Scottish Government do to ensure that trusts have the long-term support that they need to deliver on uh, these opportunities to increase the number of rural homes? And in particular, timescale is of importance here. Cabinet Secretary. Um, so so the, the Scottish Government remain very keen to work with Communities Housing Trust to ensure that deliverable projects are implemented and to ensure that communities can access the focused support they need at the right time. I do recognise the importance of sustainable funding arrangements for these organisations to support the delivery of more homes. In a letter sent to the Local Government <coughs> Housing and Planning Committee in December, I set out priority work strands for the Remote, Rural and Islands Housing Action Plan, including funding arrangements to achieve this. And of course, that plan uh, will be published in the spring. Question number seven, Gillian Mackay. To ask the Scottish Government what work is underway to assess the impact of vapes on public health. Cabinet Secretary Hamza Youssef. We continue to work with stakeholders, including Public Health Scotland and ASH Scotland, to ensure we have a broad understanding of the impact of vaping on public health. The World Health Organisation states, and I quote, that vapes are undoubtedly harmful to health. Uh, however, clearly, given the, time, uh, the limited time that they have been used, there is uh, consequentially limited evidence on their long-term impact. We're working to review a range of evidence that is available, which will influence our refreshed tobacco action plan due to be published uh, in autumn later this year. Julian Mackay. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. There are many issues with vapes in terms of flavours and advertising that I think we should be tackling, and I hope the Cabinet Secretary would support this. As well as being an issue for public health, they are an issue for the environment, as covered by the campaign in the Daily Record today. Would the Cabinet Secretary support a ban on single-use vapes? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can, can I congratulate the other record uh, on their campaign and make a special mention of Laura Young, who I uh, was reading about, uh, colloquially described in the daily record as the Vape Crusader, which I thought uh, was, a, was, a, was a fair name for her. But uh, uh, she's done an incredible job going around the country, uh, picking up these vapes that are undoubtedly causing environmental harm. So uh, Gillian Mackay is absolutely right. There's a public health uh, issue that we are exploring and will explore, but I'm working, as you would imagine, uh, with my colleague, the Minister for Green Skills, Circular Economy uh, and Biodiversity, and, and we together uh, will ask stakeholders with relevant expertise to examine the evidence and assess what action the Scottish Government and other partners should take, and that will include consideration of a potential ban. And, of course, I'll keep the member updated. Siobhan Brown. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the, the Cabinet Secretary be, may be aware the issue of youth vaping is something that I've taken particular interest in, and I'm looking forward to a member's debate on the issue at the end of the month. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if the Scottish Government has conducted an assessment into advertising in the vaping industry? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, uh, we should uh, look into that uh, issue. And, uh, as I say, there are a number of issues to consider from a public health perspective. Uh, clearly, we know that there is evidence that young people and a number of young people who would not have considered smoking a cigarette uh, are taking up uh, uh, vaping. So there is concern about the advertising, particularly on the social media platforms as well as uh, other platforms too. So uh, that should absolutely be part of the consideration uh, that uh, I have already referenced in my response to Gillian Mackay in relation to the stakeholders that have the expertise. They should explore and examine a range of issues in relation to vaping, as I say, including a potential uh, ban for the, the disposable uh, and single-use vapes. Question number eight, Maggie Chapman. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to address any racial profiling practices in Police Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. Please Police Scotland should operate at all times with fairness, integrity and respect, and irrespective of ethnicity. The Chief Constable has made clear his commitment that Police Scotland must become an actively anti-racist organisation. In respect of Stop and Search, the Code of Practice in Scotland was developed by an independent advisory group. It was approved by the Scottish Parliament and came into force on the 11th of May 2017 and was reviewed in 2019 and sets out clearly the rules for when and how the police in Scotland can use Stop and Search. Maggie Chapman. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Figures released in December show that people from minority ethnic backgrounds were up to 20 times more likely to be stopped by Police Scotland under counter-terrorism powers. But evidence tells us that far-right domestic terrorism is by far the greatest current threat and that racial profiling is both unacceptable and counterproductive. Does the Cabinet Secretary think that a reassessment of what a, terror what a terrorism threat looks like is urgently needed in a Scotland that welcomes refugees and other immigrants? And what actions does he consider necessary to ensure we tackle racist police practices? 
Cabinet Secretary. Now, just to be clear, first of all, that Scotland welcomes people from all over the world. Over successive generations, migrants and refugees have contributed greatly to our society, as well as bringing diversity to our communities. And racism in any form is abhorrent and wholly unacceptable. Counter-terrorism is reserved and is delivered through the UK Government Contest Strategy. The Scottish Government is actively engaged with the Home Office to ensure that the recently announced review of the strategy appropriately reflects the situation. And that takes into consideration the terrorism threat throughout the UK, including Scotland. The operation of counter-terrorism in Scotland is a matter for Police Scotland taking account of the specific code of practice for counter-terrorism stop and search at the border issued by the Home Office. I do agree with uh, Maggie Chapman that in relation to the threat uh, and the assessment of the threat of terrorism, that Police Scotland hold perhaps the biggest piece of the jigsaw and they do look at the issues which have been raised by Maggie Chapman on a regular basis. 